today we're going to start to talk about the history of everything. Well, really the history of humans, because we don't really usually care too much about the history of cockroaches or of owls. The history of humans from the beginning to now. Now imagine Earth is 24 hours. The history of our planet is 24 hours. Think about the first three hours from zero to 3 a.m. What's happening? It's just a swirl of fire and meteorites and all kinds of stuff, explosions. Nothing is alive. Our planet is this bowl of dust swirling around as gravity starts to form in the middle. And we start to have this sphere, this sphere that we call Earth. Now, at about 4 a.m., we get bacteria. Oh my goodness, isn't that exciting? 4 a.m. And they're tiny, they're microscopic. They are so small you can't even see them. And they start to replicate. How did that happen? How did we go from non-living things and non-living elements to suddenly having simple bacterial organisms? We don't know. Nobody really knows. It's almost impossible to know because we can't go back and check. How did life begin? We don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I was having a nap because from 4 a.m. when bacteria was formed until about 8.30 p.m., nothing happened. Almost nothing. It was incredibly tedious on Earth. The bacteria in the oceans were just kind of squelching around, having babies, replicating, duplicating, but not much else was happening. Nothing was really happening, but then they started to evolve. At about 8.48 p.m., the most amazing thing happens. Jellyfish are created. That's right. Jellyfish, the most fascinating animals in the world. They have no brains and they have no hearts. Are they living? And they never die. They are immortal. Jellyfish come into the earth at 8.48 p.m. And again, nothing much happens after that. We have these jellyfish gurgling around, not doing very much at all. Um, and nothing else happens until, until we get to about 10.56 p.m. And now we get the really exciting stuff. The dinosaurs come out. The dinosaurs, hooray! Velociraptors, Triceratops, Brontosaurus, mostly vegetable eating, vegetable loving dinosaurs. Uh, herbivorous dinosaurs, some carnivorous dinosaurs, of course, um, hunting these prey, but mostly that was it. Dinosaurs. We have dinosaurs. We have all kinds of stuff. We have vertebrae animals with spines and backbones starting to run around. We have ecosystems. We have food chains. We have nature, the nature that you guys think about. But here's the thing. You and I are mammals. I hope so. You could be a reptile watching this, and in that case, well done. But mammals are quite unique. We're the babies of the planet. We didn't show up until about 11.39 p.m. in our 24 hours. There's only 21 minutes until midnight, and mammals just showed up. How do we know what mammals are? Well, mammals, what, they give birth? to live young, they have backbones. So we have these mammals running about, badgers and squirrels, I imagine, and the hamsters and guinea pigs. And you're thinking, hang on a minute, where are the humans? These magnificent humans like you and I, where are they? Well, they show up at 11.58 p.m. and 43 seconds, that's important. They show up with only one minute and 13 seconds left on the 24 hour clock. Our entire human history in 24 hours is only one minute and 13 seconds. That's it, that's all we've got. It's almost nothing. And then even then, inside this one minute and 13 seconds, humans are basically idiots. We're dim-witted, we're dumb, we're slow, we're unskilled, uneducated for most of our history. So then fast forward a little bit, and now suddenly we have the Homo habilis and the Homo erectus, early humans, 
and I wish I could tell you they were really wonderful, just like you and I, but they weren't. They were very, 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 very dim-witted and pretty useless. Um, of course, they could feed themselves and they would clothe themselves and make some fires and things like that, but they were very, very limited, limited organisms. You wouldn't really be able to have a conversation with these people. There's no art, there's no culture, there's no music. Well, maybe there's some music but very, very basic limited human life forms, about 50% less intelligent than you. Now, something very important happens because suddenly we have these guys called Homo sapiens, which is where we come from. And they started to go north. They started to migrate, but these Homo sapiens had evolved and they were far more intelligent than everybody else. And if you are the smartest kid in the room, you get 100% in every test. In fact, you're doing a test and nobody else knows how to do tests. Homo sapiens suddenly were able to do so many things that other people couldn't. They were able to design technology, use tools, do an array, a host of things that poor Neanderthals and other basic primitive human forms couldn't do. So what happens? Well, it's the same thing that always happens. When you have one group who are stronger than the next, they have a competitive advantage, they took over. The Homo sapiens began to dominate the other humans around the world. What happened to the Neanderthals? Well, it's very difficult to know. Did we get rid of them? Did we dominate them? Did we mix together with them? Well, all probably happened because a lot of people around the world have Neanderthal DNA, some people more than others. And that tells us, that suggests that these Neanderthals and Homo sapiens kind of mesh together. But Homo sapiens were dominant, that's important. What do you think these Homo sapiens would do? These early humans, 50% less intelligent than you, but with 150% more time. They didn't go to school, they didn't have jobs. They were just living in these hunter-gatherer and nomadic tribes, these groups. So what would you do all day? What would you do? Next time out, we're going to talk about the great leap forward. And it's not just a giant jump. <laughs>